Welcome back to the longest-running real estate radio show in the history of the world, the Loveland Report and the Lone Ranger Show. I've been doing this show for, I think it's been over 26 years now, That's amazing. And it's funny, bringing everybody their news. I really enjoy it. But, hey, the rest of the time I am out selling houses, helping people buy homes, manage their investment properties. I am a full-time realtor. Despite our immense radio talent, you and I do not get paid to do this show. You're not a a paid radio host. I I, would. I, I You're not making it's too money late for me to change. It's too late for me to change careers. You know, I had dreams when I first started the show. Yeah, I'll syndicate this. I'll be Sean Hannity Jr. Didn't happen that way, folks. I'm I'm better at real estate. But Bruce, I want to dig into these rates are changed, and so now you hear things and prices rising. You hear things about affordability. But if somebody calls you, and we'll give the number in a second, you can look at their credit report and you can say you can help them. Get, afford more home. How, tell them how you do that. Absolutely. First of all, we want to determine what your buying power is based on your current debt ratio with the debts that you have. And we build into that a price of the house, including taxes and insurance and whatever else might be included in that PMI. But then sometimes people look at it and they go, well, like, you know, um, I can't afford that house. You can't afford that house because you have a $700 a month car payment or you have... Yeah these excessive student loans, or your Best Buy, what are you buying at Best Buy every week, okay? Yeah. So we'll look at that and say, if we can pare these things down, consolidate, get them paid off, then that will give you X amount more buying power. Because I can tell you something, my 80-inch screen TV did not appreciate. Yeah. But my houses appreciate yeah. like crazy. And and that's the, that's the part that, that I don't even try and get into. I tell people... Do that. Well, now, as far as your job and what you're doing, you want to, this is something that was taught to me. Okay, when you, if you're working a job, you want to make more money? Ask your boss every day when you talk to him, is there anything else I can do for what you? What else can I do to make what more money? What else can money? I do to make more money? And am I doing everything okay? And what else can I do? And if you don't continue to progress at that job, go find another job. Now, don't quit the job before you find the new don't job. Don't quit the job. That's a millennial you, thing. That's I've a, had this talk with my stepson several times. It's funny. I've, it's like I, I don't brag about it, but most of the time I talk to him, I'm right. But he doesn't He doesn't really – he, he, yeah, he kind of shakes his head about that. But we're, uh, we're in, in that retrospect. That is a millennial thing. You know, it's, it's speaking of millennial things, by the way, just, it, just so we don't forget, if you'd like to talk to Cleve, he can be reached at 407-352-8118. Or the Lone Ranger at 407-250-9144. So it's speaking of millennials. Okay, so look at I'm looking for a new executive assistant. Okay, yep. mine's been with me for 11 years. She's going to retire in September. So I'm interviewing for an executive assi- yep. uh, assistant. Okay, now this has been absolutely painful and hilarious at the same time. But I'm calling, I'm talking to a girl that calls me and says she's interested in the position. And she sounds nice on the phone. And maybe she's capable, not, doesn't have experience doing it. And I run a big company. I need a, I need a well qualified person yeah. that can keep my business in order. I mean, it's not, it's not just a, an entry level position, it's a high level position. And so I asked her, I, for some reason, I just got this vibe and I said, so let me ask you a question. Um, like how often do you call in sick for work? She goes, well, whenever I don't think I'm bringing value to the team, I'm like, well, do you think you're bringing value to the team when you're not there? And she goes, well, if I don't feel like I'm having a, the right day, I would, I'm like, this conversation's over. Like, so, so her, her spirit animal was the field mouse. Yeah. So, <laughs> and it's funny because like my work ethic is, I would probably have to lose my leg before, like my wife is like, you have, you know, you have a runny nose, you're sweating, don't go to work today, okay, stay home. And I'm like, I can do it, I can do it. She goes like, no, just do your staff a favor and just maybe work from home, okay? But I work, I have a strong work ethic. I look for people that have a strong work ethic. I don't think that taking off the day because you just had a bad day, is the right thing to do. That's a millennial thing. And that is a millennial thing. And it's the same thing. When you're interviewing a realtor, you can always just call me or you talk to somebody. I love it when they say, oh, I've got a family member who's just got their license. Find out how many homes a week do they sell? How how long have they been on the job? What's their list price to sales price ratio? This is the thing. And it's funny. I interview agents to come on my team. I'm very, very selective. And my team of four salespeople, we sell more than real estate offices full of 50, 60, 70 people. Oh, of course Because you do. most people get into real estate for the freedom. 
Yeah, and they, I want the free time. Yeah, yeah, the free time. They think the phone's just going to ring. It's magic. There's a money tree you pick, you pick from, and buyers just call you and say, I want to write an offer, and it just happens. No, it, it is hard work. So if you're interested in that position, Bruce, what number do they call you at? You can reach me, the loan arranger, at 407-250-9144. That's 407-250-9144. Or we bring you home Dot com. Got another article here, Bruce, talking about how most people don't have a financial planner. I'm going to tell you about something that you do need. Yeah, you need the financial planner, but you also need a real estate planner. And that's how Absolutely. I approach my business. And I help people talking about their primary residence and when are we going to downsize or what's the next house look like? What's your dream home look like? How many rental properties do you want to have? Are we going to do leapfrog? Is it time to get rid of that one? That one's a dog. Um, you've got 17 rental properties Let's make that 10, just make them larger, and let's get rid of those, and let's give some of the money to your financial planner because the market's down and it's probably going to go back up. I work with planners and estate attorneys on things like this all the time, and we'd love to help you with that at Loveland Properties. Uh, I love, like I said, I love seeing landlords making money off their real estate and then riding off into the sunset, living a great life. Isn't that a wonderful thing? And, you know, it's funny you, you say that because you and I are cut from the same cloth when it comes to that. We We really do this so we can help more people. And, you know, we do these seminars, we do these training classes. We don't even generally charge for them. So, and you could go, you can sign up for one of these fancy ones on the weekend and pay $1,565 and buy the CDs and the eight track tapes. But we don't charge for that because we want to see people succeed. And listen, don't get us wrong. Cleve and I have made lots of mistakes. We've made a lot of mistakes, okay? But we share those mistakes with you so you don't I can give you them. the addresses on those mistakes. I can give you the addresses <laughs> on those mistakes, too. It's funny you say that because, you know, I was asked last night, I was doing a crypto, uh, how to buy a real estate with crypto event last night, and uh, um, one of the agents said, well, how many properties do you own right now? And I said, I just have three properties. He says, well, I thought you had a bunch of properties. I said, yes, one of my big mistakes is I sold them all about five or six years ago. He says, oh, that was a big mistake. I'm like, yeah. I thought, well, I'm, but I'm winding down. I'm getting six older. Six of one, half dozen another. That money's in the market for you. So, But this is what, I mean, there's no perfect way to do it. And, but what's right for you and what works. We've seen what fails, though. We've seen, We've what, seen fails. what fails, and that's having five rental properties, and you don't have twenty grand in the bank, and and, and borrowing hard if money to buy. You've got five those. rental properties. You should be receiving twenty thousand dollars a month in income, just about if you have yep. them paid off. Yep. So th- there's there's ways to do it, and we can help you with that. And there's ways not to do it. First thing you don't do is start flipping uh, with other people's money. Um, paying to be coached or paying five thousand dollars to sit in a hotel ballroom and learn about that just because you watch a couple tv shows think you're going to get it done so listen i got this article that i i pulled up from cbs news uh, florida is the least affordable place to live in the united states of america the least affordable That's because of our, I looked our wages at, i looked at this well i looked at this article and it's this this lady by the name of Sally Starkey who moved here from Chicago. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now Chicago, that mm-hmm. seems like an expensive place to a live, doesn't it? Yep. Okay. And then she, she got disappointed when she moved here to Naples. Okay. Now not Orlando, not Seminole County, not Lake County, but Naples. Uh-huh. Okay. And you think Naples is a cheap place to live? Not really. I don't think it's a cheap place. I think to it's live. one of our most expensive cities. It's probably, it's, it's Top probably, five. Probably is the top five. So she got so disappointed in the rents that she wants to move back to Chicago. Now, I hope she moves back to Chicago. I kind of do, too. Those are the people that we really don't want here to stay. But I found it fascinating that she was looking at that and how they think that we should have more rent control. Now, I think rent control is socialism. Okay? Now, I did hear something on the news. Well, the key there is she obviously did not own in Chicago. No, she didn't know she would have Chicago. sold for 900 and come here and She's bought for She's a born five. to rent. She's a born to rent. Yep. She'll yep. always be a renter. But you know what? Here's and you and I try to help that a those people. That's a Springsteen song. Isn't it? I, no, that's I, born to run, sorry. Yeah, I think I think it is. So, you know, it, it's funny because um I I look at that and I don't think we should have rent control. I in the fl- state of Florida does not have rent control. On the other hand, I do think it is fair that a landlord give the tenant ample notice There's laws when that. raising oh, yeah. when raise so it's funny i heard on the news somebody was saying well you should give them at least 60 days by law you have to if is that yep, right yep, you have to give yep. them 60 days yep. if you're going to raise the rent by more than a certain amount yeah and so we, there's, when we manage properties we do this and i always talk to my landlord and say all right this one's cool i think we're going to raise the rent this much do you want to sell it it's worth this much 
um, and, and I go through that, the real estate planning that I always talk about. But rents, you got to let the tenant know. And if they're a good tenant, maybe you give them a little bit of a break. You don't want to get too far behind the market, Bruce. Because no, you don't. You, you don't. And you don't want to be greedy. And and the thing is, is yeah, that's it. Pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. But what you don't want, I have people bring me that house. Oh, they're such wonderful people. They've been our tenants for seventeen years, and they're only pay, they're paying us nine hundred a month on like oh clockwork. Oh my gosh! Yeah, you know, on a house that should be renting for twenty five hundred. So I don't even I I purposely stop myself because immediately my math brain goes to my calculator, and I want to add up all the money lost, and if that was invested, if that paid down the mortgage, those kinds of things. And, and so I don't do that. But there's there's a balance to it, and there's a good business ethic to it, and you want to run it. And that's that's the problem people have. Is it, they're not – They get tenant. too emotional. You want, to have a, you want to have a bad tenant? Rent to a family member. Don't do a background check. That's right. You know, And they're both – and really be kind of a contest on who's, who's uh, – the and worst. if you want somebody that w- will manage your property for you, take the take all the burden off you. Call Cleve. He yep. can be reached at 407-352-8118. That's 407-352-8118. If you don't want to be a, a, a tenant and you want to learn how to be a landlord and own properties, or you want to get into the market right now in any capacity as an investor, first-time home buyer, either way, Call the loan arranger. I've been in the business for 33 years. I've closed well over 10,000 transactions. I'm one of the top producers, not only locally, but in the entire country. You can count on me and my team to take great care of you. I don't tell you that to impress my numbers upon you. I tell you that so that you can follow other people that have followed the path. And I to promise you, if you come to me for a mortgage, you will never be disappointed in the level of service and the terms that I give. 407 407- Two five zero nine one four four, or we bring you home dot com. How much time we got? Uh, we've got about uh, three and a half All minutes. Four zero seven three five two eight one one eight for one of the busiest real estate offices in town. I've got a question here? Article out of Wall Street Journal, Bruce, talking about oh you've got equity. Oh let's cash that out. And I have people ask me this. Like I've had some first time buyers. They're in their house for three four years now. They've made one hundred and fifty grand. They're like oh my god I want to sell. I'm like okay where are you gonna live? That's going right. back in with your parents. It's the, now, if mom and dad left you a home, okay, great. But I don't know if they want you moving back in with them. So it, it's all relative, and it's funny because I hear this on the, all the uh, a lot of the the I call it you know the churning, you know oh you know there's people that got refinanced every nine every probably nine or ten months over the past four years, and they shouldn't have. They just sucked out some money, spent money on getting the loan, and they don't have any. Don't to let show mortgage for companies yeah. convince you to do that. So they might have a couple Chanel handbags and a new and a new BMW in the driveway. But it's not the way to go. You want to build your wealth. I track my real estate properties. I track their values, and I know what my equity is. And I know how much my, my financial planner has. This is something to look at. And I know what my housing plans are for the next 10 years. I know where I'm going to be and what I'm going to do unless I've come, I stumble across a great deal um, or I stumble across the home. So I tell my wife all the time, I said, honey, I could show you three great houses and we can move. But just The only problem is I don't know if I'll qualify for that mortgage. Yes, you so, will. Yeah, so anyway. Um, have that bit of sense there. You know, that's why, Bruce, you wouldn't refi somebody just for the heck of it. No, I there think has that, to be a matter of fact, I think that should be malpractice. And I th- see a lot of people call me and they go, yeah, I'm already in the process of a refinance. I look at it and I'm like, why would you do that? refi a there's, 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 matter of fact, most of you should not refinance to lower your rate unless you have a balloon note or an adjustable rate mortgage. Most of you should not refinance to get rid of PMI right now. Here's the reason that you might entertain it. Cashing out to consolidate debt or to invest in another property. Yeah. Other than that, there are very few yeah. reasons to refinance right now. Yep. Making, go make some money. Go work on that. If you have questions about it, I can tell you I will probably discourage about 50 to 60% of you from refinancing. So you can always count on somebody for the right answer, the truthful answer, and, the le- and, and not self-serving to me, but serving you, oh, no 407-250-9144. That's 407-250-9144, or webringyouhome.com. Realtors, I can't say enough about Bruce and his team. You want your loans to close and close on time. Don't waste your time. I just call Bruce's office, 407-352-8118 for Loveland Properties. We can help you get your home sold. We'll get you a couple months to shop afterwards so you can find that dream home in this crazy market. Yep, we'll be back in five minutes. Stay tuned for the last segment of the Loveland Report and the Lone Arranger Radio Show.